That's pretty good. Holy Roller, Issue 1, written by Andy Samberg, Rick Remender, and Joe Troman, the guitarist from Fallout Boy. Three writers, all insane dudes, writing one comic about a dude with a bowling ball, fighting Nazis. Pretty cool. I got a variant cover. This is not the regular cover here. I just, I, did, I didn't really like the regular cover. It looked too, we're making a comic book to me. This is what the regular cover looks like. It's just, it just looks like, like look at me, I made a comic book. It's about a superhero and he's got a bowling ball. And the first time I saw this cover, I thought to myself, that looks like a comic that you would see in a comic. You would see a kid reading a comic in a comic. And an adult would be telling that kid, don't read comics, they rot your brain. That's what that cover looks like to me. That cover looks like a spoof. Looks like a, a, a fake superhero that maybe Andy Samberg would have referenced in an SNL skit. Or maybe he would have pretended to be in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So I didn't get that cover. I got the better cover. Look at that cover. Look at, look, at, look at the art on this cover. Look at the colors. Look at the detail. And it says, G-Gen Nazis on. Now that, that makes me interested. That says, okay, there's going to be Nazis in here. Now I want to read it. At first, I'll admit, I was a little nervous because Andy Samberg is really funny. You know, he's a really funny dude. He's got a ton of great movies and he's got a ton of great spoof and parody music videos and songs he's done. Uh, but I was a little nervous about him getting in the comic realm, you know, getting on my turf, playing with my toys. I was, I was nervous. But honestly, worst case scenario, say it is just some C-list parody superhero that he wrote a comic with Rick Remender and Joe Troman about. Realistically, it's going to be a massive budget, terrible piece of art that's funny because of how much time and effort they put into it. If it's a bad idea and you put tons and tons of time and effort into it, it just gets funnier. So, worst case scenario, it's a hilarious disaster. And I'm okay with that. So I went into it with kind of mid-level expectations. I know that Rick Remender can deliver because Deadly Class is great. Seven to Eternity is great. Black Science is something I have not read yet, but I've heard it's great. And The Sacrificers, which is the issue that I saw the ad for Holy Roller in, is also great. So Rick Remender is a pretty great writer. And if he's teaming up with Andy Samberg, who's a pretty funny dude, and Joe Troman, who I'm not sure what he's contributing, but he's got to have some kind of chaotic energy involved, right? He's Joe Troman. Then it's probably going to be good. And honestly, I really liked it. I liked it way more than I thought I would. The pacing is really natural. There's a lot of honest emotion in it. The art is not my favorite art, but it's really strong. It's really strong art. And it's consistent, and the anatomy is there, even though sometimes people are just ugly, just really ugly people. But overall, it captures a mood, it does it consistently, and it does it honestly. The dialogue reads like a script for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Like it's one liner after one liner. I'm not gonna give away the whole dialogue, but this line, I like this line a lot. This isn't about Mona Linda's Chia Pet Beaver. I love it. And in the context, you're gonna love it. Hey, hey, hey. Clyde, is that anti-Semitism you? Classic. And check out this billboard they put in there. It says, I free ASF. And he's got a bald eagle on his arm and the dad's got some kind of rifle. This is Ohio. Andy Samberg, or maybe Rick Remender, or maybe Joe Troman, I don't know. One or all three of these guys really don't like Ohio. And you can't blame them. But really, it, it seems like they hate Ohio. One thing I'm a little sick of with comics and TV and movies in general that, that is in here is flashbacks to the 80s where things are just so over cliche and nostalgic and there's no way it was possibly that colorful and interesting. And the issue starts with, with a flashback to 1986 in an arcade that is in a bowling alley, which makes sense considering the title. But I just don't need to see any more scenes where kids who look like Biff from Back to the Future beat up the nerd who's good at video games in an arcade in the middle of the 80s. 
I'm just over it, but it's nostalgic and it sells. So what are you gonna do, I guess? For a little while there, right before halfway through the issue, it seems like Sandberg is just doing line after line, just making jokes, making jokes, making jokes. And it's fun. It's fun to read all the jokes, but it felt like he was losing perspective for a little while there. He was he was forgetting that he was doing an overarching thing and he was just firing off one-liners and being like, look how funny I am. But towards the middle, when he reunites with his dad, the main character reunites with his dad and his dad is dying of cancer and his dad has a great one-liner. But overall, the mood in that scene is really genuine. It comes down to earth. It's very touching, honest. The stage is being set for fighting Nazis due to actual anti-Semitism, which is pretty interesting with anti-Semitism on the rise in America. This is the creative team that I would want to see do a, a comic about that issue. If they couldn't get Larry David, of course. I'd love to see Larry David write a comic about Nazis. I wonder how much you'd have to pay him for that one. The part that I was most not looking forward to was when he puts on that dumb costume and become some lame superhero who carries around a giant bowling ball. I was not looking forward to that. Thankfully, he doesn't do it in this issue, so I got what I wanted. Instead, we get a really intense fight scene with a regular dude who happens to only have a bowling ball on him. So it's genuine that he's beating up these dudes with a bowling ball instead of being like, I could have chosen a sword or a gun, but instead, here's 20 pounds of whatever bowling balls are made of. And after he puts some serious hurt down on these guys, like I knew he was good at bowling, but he's good at fighting with a bowling ball. That seems a little silly, but I will allow it. I will allow it, Andy Samberg, because you're you. After that fight, we get left with a cliffhanger that I actually care about. I'm actually interested to see what happens next. And I was not expecting that. So I'm giving issue one of Holy Roller an eight out of 10. It really surprised me. I really enjoyed myself. I wasn't a huge fan of the art, but like I said, the art is solid. It's just not for me. That's okay. My rating is 8 out of 10. What do you think? Today's question from the audience comes from 24 Pound Guy. 24 Pound Guy says, I like ninjas. What comic should I read that has ninjas in it? Well, there's always the Teenage Mutant Turtle type ninjas. But if you're not into that, allow me to recommend something else. Daredevil by Frank Miller has some of the best ninjas in comics ever. And you don't need to buy this giant volume for it either. Really a lot of the ninja stuff happens between issues 174 and then kind of tapers off until it gets to issue 200. So there's like 20 issues in there of good ninja stuff. So if you want to read comics with ninjas, Frank Miller is your guy. So there you go, that's what I recommend. Those are the ninjas I like. Thanks for watching. Click that subscribe button or else I'll be sad.